We have some interesting information coming out from The Athletic and Corey Pronman as he interviewed some scouts and executives around the league, and there's not much love for Ivan Demidov, but there's a lot of love for some other guys that the Montreal Canadiens could pick at number five. We're going to get into that. Plus, Cole Eiserman, among some other players, were asked their opinion on what would make them a good pick for Montreal, and an unfortunate update about the former Laval Rocket goalie, Casimir Kaskis, will all coming up on this episode of Habs Digest, and we're just going to get straight into things, and we got to say that the Habs, unfortunately, are not keeping Casimir Kaskiswo and in his recent YouTube vlog. And if you're not subscribed, go subscribe. I'll leave the link to his channel down below. Unreal stuff where he, he detailed a lot of his season with the Laval Rocket this year. But in that video, well, he said this. What's going to happen with Montreal? Montreal said they're going to go to a different direction. I figured it was going to be a 50-50 uh, if I'm going to be the guy to fill that role. It's a bit sad, I know. We all kind of loved Casimir Kaskis. Well, what an interesting story he is, right? Bouncing around from the AHL to the ECHL to a cup of coffee here and there in the NHL to Sweden and coming back and having a phenomenal stint with Laval trying to help them make the playoffs as he was there with Jakob Dobesh. A 2.9 GAA with a 909 save percentage. Awesome guy. Awesome goalie. The problem is Montreal went and they decided to bring in Connor Hughes, a guy with a bit more of a pedigree, it seems, at this stage. He's a few years younger as well, and we spoke at length about Connor Hughes and the difference he could maybe make in Laval next season with Jakob Dobesh. And we kind of figured Kaskis what would be back. Montreal kind of made some indications that they might want to keep him around. But at the end of the day, Connor Hughes' numbers in the Swiss League were very impressive. Well, they translate as well as Casimir Kaskiswo's did from the Swedish League to the NHL or to the AHL. That's yet to be seen. But it makes sense. They didn't want to clog up too many of their ultimate roster spots, and they decided running with that two-goalie tandem down in Laval makes sense. Don't forget, we have Strauss Mann as well. I believe he's still under team control, who played a number of games in the AHL and down in the ECHL with Trois-Rivières. So there's going to be enough goalies in the system. Connor Hughes, they're deciding to give him the shot over Casimir Kaskis. Well, not a whole lot more to say on that front, except for I wish you the best, Casimir. And yeah, guys, go check out his video. Go subscribe to his channel. He has some awesome stuff. But we're going to quickly move into the second topic, and we're getting into some of the juicy stuff now and now the journal de quebec they did a few interviews with a few prospects kind of asking them you know hey why would you be an ideal pick for montreal whether it's well i guess at five i guess these guys aren't going to fall to 26 but they asked four players they asked Caden lindstrom they asked uh berkeley catton they asked cole eiserman and they asked tija ginla now i'm going to focus on cole eiserman's response in, in a few minutes i just want to touch on what the other guy said i don't have the quotes because there was a lot of kind of a wall of text here but essentially Berkeley Catton said it's his intelligence, right? He said, you look at guys like Jack Hughes, you look at guys like Patrick Kane, their intelligence jumps off the page at you. And when they're playing, you can see it on the ice. He said, you know, I'm, I'm mobile and I'm really smart and that's what wins championships. Caden Lindstrom's more like, I'm unique. I play with a ton of energy and more heart than anyone else. Plus he kind of implied like, look, I, look at my size. He didn't say that directly, but when he says he plays unique and he looks to get better every day and he plays with that much heart, those are some amazing characteristics. And Tija Ginla said, he's like, hey, I'm unique, right? I have a great work ethic. I have a great shot. I have a great combination of skills. And he's like, Tisha Ginla said something awesome. He said, I want to be a very different player in a few years from the player I am today. All those guys gave amazing answers. Now, this is this is not just a crap on Cole Eiserman's answer, but I got to say it was a bit interesting. Now, I know Jesse's a big Cole Eiserman fan. Unfortunately, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't record today. But Cole said, I score a lot of goals, and you have to score a lot of goals to win. Now, that's it. That's the whole quote. That's not just an excerpt of what the Journal de Quebec posted. Now, they might have taken this out of context. And again, this is just one line from one source. And I'll link that down below as well. You can go check it out for yourself. But that is what he said. He just said, I score a lot of goals. It really seems like as the days go by and we hear more and more stuff about Cole Iserman, he's the kind of guy that is just not going to change his game for anyone. He knows what he is. He's a goal scorer. He has, he got voted as the best shot in the draft by The Athletic and Corey Promen's recent article that we're going to get into a little bit later as well. So he knows it, right? And he even mentioned, he's like, you know, I need to play better defense at the next level. He said that, and he's going to Boston University next year, who I believe, bought, is it BU or BC? I think it's BU. Either way, they have a great pedigree for helping their forwards play some more defense, but for that to be the quote for Iginla giving some in intangible stuff, so all the three other guys gave that mental game, that effort thing, that work ethic, all these things that Montreal looks for. Cole Eisenman just said, I score a lot of goals. Hey, you know what? That's fair enough. But the more I'm reading about Cole Eisenman, they mentioned that in the article today as well, the more teams are kind of like, meh. You kind of look at him and you're like, I don't think he's really going to pan out at the next level. We heard one, actually multiple sc anonymous scouts and executives in an article for The Athletic today saying that, you know, uh, Cole Eisenman reminds them a lot of Oliver Wallstrom 
a guy who looked to have such a great goal scoring pedigree, but it's just not quite put it together right at, at, at any point yet. Now it's not saying he could never do it, but there's a lot of prospects who have that similar profile to Cole Eiserman that get picked really high in the draft because you're like, you can't teach that shot. Well, you maybe can, but not really, not at that level. And they just don't end up panning out. So it's very interesting. Let me know your thoughts on Eiserman. This quote kind of bugged me a little bit, but again, it could be taken out of context. I'm not going to use this to slander Cole Eiserman, but I will say the other answers from the other guys, especially Tisha Ginla, really, really impressed me. But this is time now to get into the juicy stuff of the video. The, the great stuff here from Corey Promen at The Athletic. And as always, that's going to be linked down below as well. And we got some details revealed about the topics. Before I get into this, I'm just going to ask you guys right now to hit like on the video every time I ask you guys to, to click like. It helps us out. It helps you out. It's it's awesome if, if you could do that for us. We really, really appreciate it. But we're going to get right into this. And there's a bunch, a bunch of quotes on different players that the Habs could potentially take. Now, this wasn't Habs-centric. This was very much just Corey Pronman interviewing anonymous scouts and executives from NHL teams. This is where he gets a lot of his intel, right? He likes to get a feel for how front offices around the league how they feel for a lot of the players in this draft. There's a lot of cool stuff about defensemen, like stuff about Cole Eisman, like I mentioned, but I'm going to focus on the stuff that could imply the Habs. So let's just get straight into it. The first one I wanted to talk about here was one anonymous executive that said this. He said, oh, this is basically implying after, uh, like if the top defensemen are gone and after, after Celebrini, which forward would you take? One said, I'd take Katna Reginla. They're highly skilled guys with compete. They play fast. They put the puck in the net. He said, give me a break where all the lists have to meet off. He's lighting up the MHL, but that league is so bad. Mitchkov was great versus men over there, and he went seventh. That's a wild quote for, some, for a, a, an executive to say, just really crapping on Ivan Demidov. And the funny thing is, well, I guess it's not that funny for a lot of us, including myself, who are quite big fans of Demidov. This wasn't just this executive who had that opinion. Now, not every other executive or scout was so outspoken about it, but there are a lot of concerns about Demidov skating being awkward. People saying, like, he just wasn't against very good players. We don't know how to judge him, right? He's a little slighter. He's about 5'11", and yeah, he has a decent solid two-way game. He's solid off the puck. He does a lot of great things. And while a lot of uh, analyst, scouts and executives acknowledge he kind of has that star potential, they're just not sold on him. And a lot of people are saying they might not even take him in the top five. So that was a really, really interesting quote on Demidov. And I want to know your guys' thoughts. Like, are, are you starting to have Demidov fall down your draft board? I sort of am. And at this point, there's these concerns about him being in Russia and the contract stuff. I don't know if that's just getting fabricated, but I don't know. Maybe this is the goal of these executives and scouts to mess with other teams, to mess with people like myself who are tuned into all the news, people like you guys to try and mess with their perception. All we can do is, well, we know Kent Hughes is going to pick the best player available. Kent Hughes, Jeff Gordon, Marty, the point, everyone involved in this process. But yeah, very interesting to see those opinions on Ivan Demidov, but we're going to get into some other opinions as well. One guy said the body of work would have to go to Demidov, but the pure physical tools would make you pick Lindstrom. And the best player in the last six months would be Beckett Seneca, and he would be my lean. That was one anonymous executive saying they would take Seneca over Lindstrom, over Demidov, over Catton. And the final thing I wanted to talk about was one quote on Lindstrom. Now, this wasn't just one person either. This was an opinion that was kind of spread out through three or four executives and scouts. They basically said, best case with Lindstrom, you're getting a legit number one center. But even if you miss on him and he's a third line center, he's a type of third line center a GM is ecstatic to have, the kind that winning teams have in the playoffs, with a lot of people even saying, hey, you might end up maxing out at a number two center with someone like a Lindstrom. So there's some varying opinions all over the place. Some people taking Seneca, some people taking Lindstrom, and with a kind of prevailing opinion that he might not be that super top-end talent, but there was a lot of other people saying Berkeley Catton is starting to sort of fly under people's radar because of his intelligence, because of his pure point production. Like, you look at Berkeley Catton, he is one of the most skilled guys in this draft. I'm starting to not care at his slight size because the Habs have a lot of size, right? They have Doc, they have Slavkovsky. I mean, I guess Caulfield, Gallagher, Newhook, these guys are smaller, Lane Hudson, but, you know, it's not like Catton is tiny, tiny. He could fill out a little bit. He could put on some muscle. And that mind for the game is something that translates so, so well to the next level almost always. So basically, this is to say that everything is up in the air. Have you ever seen a draft with so many players going from up here to down there all over the place? It feels like anyone after Macklin Celebrini from pick number two to say even nine or ten 
could be could go absolutely anywhere because we're seeing a Ginla mocked around there. Now we're hearing he could maybe go top five. A guy like Carter Yakemchuk, who is sometimes in the teens. There were people in this article saying he might be the best defenseman in this entire draft and they might pick him as high as, you know, in the top five. There's so much variability. I'm just so excited. Every single day we got more and more news, but this is very interesting to hear from these executives and scouts. Let us know down below what you think. Go take a look at the article and come back and share your thoughts as well. We'd really, really appreciate it. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching right till the end. I've been your host, Josh Goss. I'll catch you in the next one.